Life's origins have been a point of curiosity and exploration for scientists, philosophers, and thinkers across history. Its genesis is an intricate mystery, nestled in the shifting sands of time. It's a question that dares to grapple with the raw essence of existence. How did life begin? Scientists offer numerous theories, each a stepping stone towards unraveling the mystery of life's origins, aiming to shed light on this fascinating, complex puzzle. The Primordial Soup Theory – The Dawn of Life The Primordial Soup Theory whisks us back in time, to an era when Earth was but a young planet, swaddled in warm, nutrient-rich waters. These ancient oceans are the birthplace of this fascinating theory, first conceived in the early 20th century by two separate thinkers, Alexander O'Perrin and J.B.S. Haldane. Their shared vision was one of simple organic molecules basking in these early waters, gradually evolving into more intricate structures, the dawn of life as we know it. The genesis of this idea lies in the combination of these primordial elements, conjuring up an image akin to a hearty, life-giving broth. Picture these early molecules swirling and combining in the warm, rich waters of ancient Earth, eventually giving rise to complex forms, the varied precursors to life. It's akin to a cosmic kitchen, where the ingredients of existence were slowly simmered to perfection. However, like any good recipe, the primordial soup theory has evolved and been refined over time. Today, it remains a captivating idea, offering a tantalizing glimpse into the potent mix of elements that may have sparked the flame of life. So let's dive deeper into these ancient waters as we continue to explore the enigmatic origins of life on Earth. The Panspermia Hypothesis – Life from Outer Space Venturing beyond the confines of our planet, we encounter the fascinating concept of the Panspermia Hypothesis. This extraordinary proposition suggests that our beloved Earth may not have been the cradle of life. Instead, life in its most rudimentary form might have embarked on an interstellar journey, itching a ride on comets or meteorites and eventually finding a home on our planet. The universe, in all its boundless glory, teems with the potential for life. Each comet that streaks across the night sky, each meteorite that hurtles towards the Earth, is a celestial courier, potentially bearing the seeds of life. Imagine these cosmic vehicles, churning through the vast expanses of space, carrying with them microscopic passengers ready to colonize new worlds. Supporting the panspermia hypothesis is the sheer tenacity of certain microorganisms, such as the virtually indestructible tardigrades. These tiny organisms have shown remarkable resilience, even surviving the vacuum and radiation of outer space. The resilience of these microscopic explorers fuels the belief that life could indeed have survived a journey through the cosmos. The hydrothermal vent theory, life from the depths. Venturing beneath the surface of the vast oceans, we plunge into a world of towering chimneys spewing forth mineral-rich waters. Welcome to the realm of hydrothermal vents, the subject of our next intriguing hypothesis about life's beginnings. The hydrothermal vent theory, a compelling tale woven in the depths of the sea, speculates that life may have taken its first breath in these searing underwater geysers. The story unfurls deep under the ocean's surface, where hydrothermal vents etch their fiery signatures on the seabed. These remarkable structures are akin to underwater volcanoes, erupting with hot, mineral-laden water that creates a unique environment. Scientists theorize that this rich cocktail of elements could provide the perfect crucible for the genesis of life. Imagine these underwater chimneys belching forth warm currents teeming with a brew of minerals and nutrients. Pictured in this submarine inferno, the dance of creation unfolding, with life slowly springing forth from the vent's nourishing plume. It's a scenario of dramatic beginnings, set in an underwater landscape that rivals any terrestrial vista for sheer majesty and wonder. Adding weight to this theory is the extraordinary life found around modern hydrothermal vents. Like alien organisms from a science fiction novel, these life forms have adapted to thrive in an environment that defies conventional wisdom about life's necessities. They don't rely on sunlight for energy, as most life does. Instead, they're chemosynthetic, which means they draw energy from the chemicals spewed forth by the vents. This way of life could well have been possible on the early Earth, reinforcing the idea that life could have originated in these deep-sea cauldrons. The RNA World Hypothesis – Life's First Genetic Material Welcome to the world of RNA, ribonucleic acid, an essential player in the game of life. The RNA World Hypothesis catapults us into a world where this molecule takes center stage performing roles usually associated with both DNA and proteins. Envision RNA, agile and versatile, 
the star of the early molecular world, paving the way for life as we know it today. This theory transports us back to a time when life was just a glimmer on the horizon. In this primitive world, RNA is believed to have taken on a dual role. It played the part of a stenographer, faithfully transcribing genetic information, and simultaneously, it donned the chemist's hat, catalyzing chemical reactions necessary for life. RNA is a molecule not to be underestimated. It's akin to a seasoned actor, capable of playing multiple roles with equal finesse. As a storehouse of genetic information, it rivals the much-celebrated DNA. When it comes to catalyzing chemical reactions, it competes with proteins, those diligent workers in the cell's metabolic factory. Such versatility lends credibility to the RNA world hypothesis, placing this adaptable molecule in the spotlight of life's early stage. But why RNA? Why not its more famous cousin DNA? RNA, it turns out, is a simpler molecule than DNA. Yet it carries the potential for impressive molecular acrobatics. It possesses the capability to self-replicate, a crucial factor in the propagation of life. This quality, coupled with its ability to catalyze reactions, puts RNA firmly in the driver's seat in life's initial journey. In this early world, RNA could have served as a self-replicating system, capable of evolving and adapting to its environment. As the first form of life evolved, so too would have the genetic material. RNA, acting as a prototype, would have given way to the more stable DNA, setting the stage for life's incredible complexity and diversity. The Coservate Hypothesis Protocells as the first life forms As our journey into life's origins continues, we stumble upon a fascinating hypothesis that deals with the inception of life on a microscopic level. This theory, known as the Coservate Hypothesis, pulls us into the captivating world of protocells, the supposed forebears of life as we understand it today. Coservates, as they are known, are minuscule spherical droplets that form naturally from organic molecules in water. These tiny entities bear an uncanny resemblance to the cells that make up all known life forms. Yet, these are not living cells. They are considered protocells, entities that exhibit some characteristics of life, but are not in themselves alive. Envision these tiny droplets, each possessing a semi-permeable membrane, capable of growing and dividing, and even performing simple metabolic processes. Think of them as life's rehearsal stage, a testing ground where the fundamental principles of biology were trialed before life as we know it took center stage. Imagine a world awash with these tiny protocells, swirling and multiplying in the primordial waters of early Earth. Picture them as tiny biochemical laboratories, each protocell providing a contained environment where the earliest reactions of life could unfold in relative safety. What makes the Coservate hypothesis truly fascinating is its potential explanation for one of life's biggest mysteries. How did non-living matter transform into living cells? According to this theory, Coservates could have housed these primitive biochemical reactions, providing a stepping stone towards the development of true living cells. In this imagined world, Coservates would act as microscopic crucibles, providing the right environment for these complex reactions to occur. As these reactions became more complex and diversified, Coservates could have evolved into true cells, leading to the first life forms. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.